Let me take you back to high school. You're sitting in class waiting for the bell to ring whilst the teacher is setting you homework to research into something. But regardless of whether you rolled your eyes at it or you were listening attentively, they always gave you one standout golden rule. Don't use Wikipedia. Now, back then, this was always puzzling to me as it may have been to many of you. After all, Wikipedia is this easily accessible library of information with some of the most dedicated contributors on Earth. There are thousands and thousands of trustworthy articles about loads of subjects from the most obvious to the most obscure. I always thought if someone did blatantly lie on Wikipedia, then people would notice. But little did I know that last year in 2022, a story came out that would prove me so, so wrong. This is the story of the Wikipedia editor who faked history with hundreds of articles and got away with it for 10 years straight. These are the Gmail hoaxes. To start going to this rabbit hole, we first have to establish where we are and who exactly is the person who did this. Our main setting is Chinese Wikipedia, the Chinese edition of Wikipedia. Created in 2001, it has over 3 million registered users and over a million articles, but unlike most editions, it's had a decent amount of controversy. A large amount of this is due to the fact that Wikipedia has articles for literally everything, and if you know anything about China, you'll be aware that the CCP don't exactly want their citizens knowing about, let's just say, certain events. Actually, that's a lie. That's Tarek. It worked! Oh my god! After multiple back and forths, more blocks and unblocks, and allegations of censorship, Chinese Wikipedia was blocked from mainland China in 2015. And since then, it's been primarily used by people from Southeast Asia, particularly in Taiwan and Hong Kong. People inside mainland China have been able to use Wikipedia, although they have to use VPNs and Wikipedia doesn't really let you edit with a VPN. And then there's our perpetrator, a sole Wikipedia editor by the name of Jimao. In 2010, Jimao would start one of her first edits on Wikipedia on the history of the corrupt Qing Dynasty official Hessian. Two years later, she would turn her attention to Russian history, first with the biography of Alexander I, before then expanding to the entire history of Russia, and her edits would make herself well known in the Chinese Wikipedia community. But it was all fake. So, how did she do it? Well, Jima's edits weren't just unsourced bullshit she made up. It was more of a mix of her own research and elements of fantasy, but from the way it looked, her work was well-structured, professional, and comprehensive. Take her longest written article, for example, which discussed three fabricated 17th century uprisings and their impacts on Russia. Not only was it close to a novel in word count, but it was accompanied by a map that Jima actually drew for the article. It was so hard to tell that her work was fake because it was supposedly backed up by sources, and each article was filled to the top with knowledge. Some of her work included elaborate detail on ancient Russian coins and eating utensils, and the centerpiece of her work, which detailed the history of the fictional Kashin silver mine, had background on social history, soil composition, and refining processes. That's how detailed we are talking about here. So, let's do a little viewer experiment. On screen right now are two articles about medieval Russian history. One of them is real, whilst the other one is fake and written by Shimo. So pause the video if you'd just like to read through them or take a quick glance before making your guess. Alright, reveal in three, two, one. It's the top one, and if you did read through them, you'd realise just how similar these two really are. So, how did she get away with it for so long? Well, it all comes down to a network of lies and alt accounts. Jima gained the community's confidence by posing as a Russian scholar, and described herself as a PhD in world history from Moscow State University. She claimed to be the daughter of a Chinese diplomat in Russia, married to a Russian man, and her profile included a petition by a supposed husband related to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. As well as that, her use of alternate accounts to make herself more validated was really extensive, and it gave her edits the appearance of outside support. In at least one instance, she conversed directly with an account she controlled. Another presented themselves as a Peking University doctoral student with expertise in Russian history who claimed an off-site relationship with Jimao. Yet another account, referred later on as the Birdie account, had editing history back to 2010, but entered Jimao's control in 2019. Speaking of 2019, her work from then onwards amounted to over 200 articles that she wrote, and with that came recognition. She started to become friends with other online Russian historians, and one veteran editor of the Chinese Wikipedia, known as Eric Liu, recognised Jima with an award in early 2022 to honour her work. Even her writings on the Soviet deportation of Chinese people was checked and featured on the front page of Chinese Wikipedia, even being translated into the English, Arabic and Russian versions. The fact that she got away for it for so long was insane, but eventually, people found out. 
In 2022, a Chinese web novelist called Yi Fan was browsing Chinese Wikipedia for inspiration on his next work. He stumbled upon the Cashin silver mine, and originally, Yi Fan was impressed. The detail on this relatively obscure piece of history was intriguing, and it beckoned him to go down the rabbit hole. But as he started reading more about the Cashin silver mine and the Tver Moscow war, learning of battles, aristocrats, engineers, and more, something was really off. The Russian language versions of articles related to the period were actually shorter than the Chinese equivalent, or didn't exist at all, which was really strange. The books and pages that she had referenced in her work also didn't exist or were completely unrelated, as one of the footnotes that talked about medieval mining methods actually linked to an academic paper on automated mining in the 21st century. Another talked about a source on page 265, even though the book referenced only had 200 pages. And the knowledge of ancient Slavic wars was so unusual, considering that when Yi Fan contacted Russian historians, their records had no reference to any of those wars. Yi Fan would post its findings on the Chinese Q&A website Jihu, which is their equivalent to Quora. The post would get over 4,200 upvotes and the attention of Wikipedia, who launched their own investigation into Jimao's history, which now included over 300 articles in total. Most of them were then deleted by June 17th, and her linked accounts were permanently blocked. Wikipedia had uncovered one of the biggest lies in its history. The only thing left on her profile now is a lengthy apology and explanation for her side and what she did, published on the 19th of June, 2022. Unfortunately, it's all in Chinese and I don't speak Chinese, meaning I basically had to use a translation website as a crux to turn it into English. My sincerest apologies to anyone who's watching this video and knows Chinese because I know I might be getting some really key words wrong here. Apology letter. I am Jimao, and I would like to extend my deepest apologies to you all for the recent events, especially to those who I have hurt in my capacity. I knew I had made a terrible mistake, but I thought about it, and I had the courage to tell the truth, and I couldn't walk away. I didn't really know Russian or English. My fiancé was not Russian, but Chinese. I was born in mainland China. I went to high school. I didn't go to college. I am a housewife. So why am I here? Well, it's because I don't have any friends. My husband has been away for a long time, and I'm empty and lonely. I just fantasize about some friends. I apologize to three people I've impersonated for spending millions of words on Wikipedia learning Russian and English, and I'm afraid I can't communicate with you now. Other people who claim to know me on Wikipedia are my fantasists. My lord is me. This is my self-cosplay. I don't use his accounts very often, and I won't use them since. The learned rookie or birdie account was really controlled by another person a few years ago, someone I actually knew, and in order not to be spotted changing people, I deliberately switched to traditional Chinese. For a while, I was so distressed that I couldn't write an entry because I didn't have the ability to search literature. I cheekily went to the library and some literature sites to ask for it. My approach was to use a translator to piece together sentences, which means it takes a long time to learn a language. But I only understood the underlying grammar and words, which is so inefficient and so unhelpful that it's a true or false situation for a complex translation, so I used my imagination to fill in the blanks where it could not translate. Isaac asked me to find a document on Beria, which I had to do to come improve my search ability, and I memorized the Russian alphabet input between 2019 and 2020, but I found out that the logical chain didn't work and I started to make up nonsense. At that time, the high-level chapters were copied directly from foreign languages and the contents were almost universal. Isaac later also gave me the right to avoid examination, and later I felt pained that I couldn't bulldoze down like this and started looking for a real book, and kept reading the whole book, and knew the history of the whole book. Even though a lot of people couldn't understand, at least I had a curious heart. I've been instructed by many people, thank you for your guidance, and I have two identities. I will personally admit that I am the Wikipedia user Mao Nang, and I'm sorry I failed your expectations. Omanov, thanks for teaching, sorry things got so bad. I had so many entries that I couldn't have changed them, and if I had the courage to come clean and start over, maybe I wouldn't be in this mess. As the saying goes, in order to defend a lie, you must tell more lies. I was reluctant to delete the hundreds of thousands of words I wrote, but as a result, I wound up losing millions, and a circle of academic friends collapsed. Most of the entries I made can be deleted, and I noticed that Wikipedia has already deleted a lot of them. And despite the valuable parts, I believe that if I can speak Russian and take a few years, I can write better than now. The trouble I've caused is hard to make up for, so maybe a permanent ban is the only option. I would like to thank Isaac, Eric, John, and Matsutera An for their assistance over the past three years, and to express my profound apologies for the fact that I failed your expectations. I spent years on Wikipedia, hundreds of hours writing millions of words, and it's all gone. Wrong is wrong. I don't want to make excuses, I just want to admit my mistakes bravely. I know there will be ridicule and ridicule, I know my actions are stupid and totally deserving of ridicule, I spent too much time on the wiki. In reality, I'm a 
about to give birth, and my own family is under great financial pressure, so it is impossible for me to have time to compile a wiki. My own family is in debt, and the mortgage pressure is also very high. The above words are from the bottom of my heart and are not false. I accept my eternal ban and will not use the VPN to create any new accounts. My current knowledge is not enough to make a living, so I will learn a craft in the future, work hard, and stop doing these illusory things. The fallout and reaction to the exposing of Gmail was mixed, as it managed to get a lot of attention both in China and abroad. On one hand, you had a lot of people who had praised for Gmail's works, such as a comment on a Chinese microblogging website called Weibo, which reads, It is really awesome to invent a self-contained historical logic with details like all kinds of clothing, money and utensils. Even the Western articles praised her work in the same way as Yi Fan, noting how it was a tragedy that she posted them all on Wikipedia, rather than writing an online novel that we could still read today. And the the fact it all came from a bored and lonely housewife was pretty admirable. That being said, a lot of people were not happy. The Wikipedia community in particular was pretty disappointed, firstly in how their trust was abused and betrayed, but also in the fact that this was a massive oversight on their part. One of the big reasons that people were pretty pissed about Gmail's actions actually links back to the position that Chinese Wikipedia is in. Since being blocked from the mainland in 2015, it has become a battleground for information, because on one hand you have the contributors, the viewers from Southeast Asia, who depend on Chinese Wikipedia, and on the other hand you have people from mainland China who are given access to Chinese Wikipedia in order to spread misinformation and change details to take control and establish this pro-China narrative. Only a year before the Gmo incident, Wikimedia actually revoked access of seven editors and downgraded the privileges of 12 mainland-based administrators over infiltration concerns. They had investigated and found an unrecognised group of mainland China editors, with approximately 300 members involved in vote stacking and manipulation of elections. Wikimedia said that they took action based on credible threats to volunteer safety, while several of the affected members denied wrongdoing in subsequent interviews. That event caused a lot of uproar from the Chinese media, and Gmail's actions of editing history, even if it was with good intentions, was incredibly risky. Either way, the Gmail hoaxes will most likely go down in history as one of Wikipedia's biggest, perhaps, of all time. Again, the fact that a random Chinese housewife who was lonely and bored managed to get this far was both a testament to her skill and persistence, as well as a big hit against Wikipedia. Of course, the site had a big standard for checking for sources and avoiding plagiarism, but they didn't think to check whether the sources actually verify the content of the article. As mentioned before, multiple news publications would comment on the missed opportunity of Gmail not publishing a writing as fiction, as it was so detailed. But that was the issue. Gmail poured her time and effort into something she was proud of and something that is supposedly well written, but at the end of the day, she was still contributing to misinformation in what is already a volatile space. But let's finish off by going back to the intro. What impact does this have upon you? Should you trust Wikipedia? As much as teachers and journalists did preach Wikipedia's unreliability like it was the spawn of Satan, I generally don't think you should be as harsh, at least when it comes to bigger topics. For everyone on Chinese Wikipedia, medieval Russian history was pretty obscure, and the likelihood of someone putting in a lie about an event like World War II is much less. That being said, if you're considering using it in like a college essay or something like that, I would probably at least just check the sources. But considering that about 90% of you are just interested in general knowledge and trivia, it's fine. And whilst we may never know the true identity of Gmail or get to read her work, her curiosity has made internet history. Until next time, stay toasty.